All right, what's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Time Out with Doc and Caveman. As always, you are here with Dr. Fantasy and my co-host, the Fantasy Caveman. We are continuing to roll through our prospect profiles, and today we are talking about Chris Duarte, a six foot six wing, 190-pound senior from Oregon. He is 23 years old, which I'm sure we're going to talk about a few times. Um, six foot seven wingspan, so not much more than his height. His numbers last year at Oregon: 17.1 points, 4.6 rebounds, 2.7 assists, 1.9 steals. Shot 53% from the field, 42% from three, and 81% from the line. So nice percentages there, mm-hmm. caveman. What's your interesting fact on Chris Duarte? All right. So I found this kind of interesting because uh, you don't see a lot of NBA players come out of the Dominican Republic. That's mainly uh, a baseball uh, uh, territory. But Chris Duarte has the chance, will end up becoming only the 10th player ever to reach the NBA out of the, out of the Dominican Republic, okay. which interesting. And uh, quick trivia for, do you know the most, do, in the first, the first person to come out, I believe, uh, was Tito Horford, Al Horford's father. And then obviously Al Horford came out. Uh, uh, and then you got the bigger name like Carl uh, Anthony Towns, too, recently is from there. So found find that interest found found that pretty interesting. Uh, but let's uh, get into the strengths here. I think the biggest thing with him uh, is his shooting ability. He has a very quick and smooth release, as you'll see with a lot of these uh, highlights. I mean, it's. It looks very polished and developed. I mean, it better be considering he's 23, almost 24, which will be, which I'm sure will be brought up, especially when it comes to the weaknesses. And then another thing you notice with him, in addition to his shooting, is that I, as you, as I see him finish inside, is he's a very good finisher inside. He shot uh, right around 63 percent from inside which which is which is which is pretty good i would say uh and then uh final point before i kick it over to you that i know is uh probably not going to see it that much with these highlights but he's a great uh team defender uh i think i think a lot of that is attached to uh, you know him already being kind of polished being 23 but he he seems to always uh, know when to provide uh, help to his uh, teammates. And that's it's not something you see all the time. You either have a guy that, you know, overhelps or uh, just doesn't know. But he seem, he really does seem to know uh, when to help out his teammates on the uh, defensive end. Yeah, and I think part of the reason for that and kind of my overarching theme for his strengths is he's just a very high IQ player. And that's because he's mm-hmm. very refined. He's very developed. As we mentioned, this is a guy that's played overseas. He's taken a longer approach to getting to the NBA. And uh, you can definitely tell, though, that his game is very refined, which is one of the reason a lot of people are... You know, they're worried about his upside, which I think is a fair point. But one thing, I mean, just continually watch a shot throughout these highlights because it's really I love his shot. It's a really quick release and he's going to have no problem getting that shot up with high efficiency in the NBA. But not only with the ball in his hands, he's a very good off the ball player, too. You've seen it a few times throughout these highlights, but he cuts to the ball very well. We have seen him play in transition as in right now. Uh, but he plays very well. He's aggressive. He leads transition breaks. He's good on the pick and roll. He's just a very high IQ player on both yeah. sides of the ball. Um, and that's really kind of the most of what I have to say about him. He's a, He's got a nice shot. He's a high IQ guy. 
He can create his own shot, but I'm a little worried about him doing that at the next level, which kind of leads me to his weaknesses. The reason why it's a little concerning for me at the next level is his speed. He's not the fastest guy in the world. So I think when you're not, and he's not athletic and he's not long. So when you kind of combine those three factors, and I'm not saying he's not, but compared to other guys in the NBA, he's going to have a hard time getting around very athletic, speedy defenders. And he's not going to be a primary scorer, so that shouldn't be a huge concern. But I think he's going to be more of a lethal three-point shooter, and I think he'll struggle to get to the basket a lot more. So I think that's one of the things for me. It's not because of his age, but I think his natural speed, quickness, length, things you really can't change at this point. I think that uh, a lot of that is not elite, and he's just going to more have to rely on being a high IQ player. The other thing I've seen a lot of people say, and you'll notice as well, is he's a little predictable offensively when it comes to driving to the basket. He struggles to use his left hand a little bit, tends to drive to the right quite a bit, Mm -hmm. which NBA defenses are going to pick up on that all day, and they're going to force you left at that point. So I think that's a big concern, and that's one of those things. That's why I think he's more going to be a three-point specialist in the NBA rather than a guy with a high, high high-level ceiling. Yeah, you you know me well. You know I love I love to mention when guys drive if they can finish with both hands or if they don't. Because finishing with both hands really does give you such an advantage at the at the NBA level. Uh, you kind of mentioned. I mean, obviously the overall theme with him is his age, and while that makes him more ready, he's definitely one of the more NBA ready prospects in this draft. Just and. But unfortunately, that's 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 primarily due to the fact that he's 23, about to be 24. And for reference point, he is older than Brandon Ingram. Mm-hmm. Just uh, and that really, I think that highlights, and it's kind of unfa- kind of unfair in a way to really, you know, hold that that much against him. But that's just the reality. Is that while. I think he can make some improvements. Maybe he can, uh, I guess, I guess, but I think he's going to coming in. It's almost going to be what he is. Uh, we'll talk about some NBA player comparisons, but, uh, you mentioned uh, him driving. He's not a very, he's not a very strong passer, especially in the pick and roll. So he's not really going to be able to be utilized in that way, which is really uh, not, not definitely not going to open at the next level. Like you said, he's pretty much going to be a spot up uh, three point shooter, kind of, kind of like an instant energy uh, type guy. <laughs> I would agree with that. So, and one of the things I'll say too, I don't hold age against these players as much as other people do. And I'm not even saying you, there's some people who are like, I wouldn't even touch these guys in the draft because of their age and their ceiling. But to me, it's not as much as age that limits his ceiling. It's just some of his, like I said, speed, length, athleticism. You can't teach those things. So I think that it just limits his upside to a certain extent. So, and at this point, uh, you know, he is what he is. So to me, that's more what limits him more than his age. Because let's say he was a super raw, athletic 24-year-old guy that maybe just picked up basketball later in life. At that point, you say, okay, you know, maybe you add in, uh, you know, just more minutes playing basketball and he's a guy that could develop. So I think you can develop at a later age. It's not as likely and we don't ever really see it, but I think it's possible. So um, let's talk about some ideal fits then. So realistically, I've seen him kind of going in the late teens for the most part. He slips into the early twenties sometimes and some mocks that you'll see as well. And I think that's fair because when you get to that point in the draft, you're talking about, teams that are in the playoffs and they're looking to kind of solidify their 
Yeah, look at what we're watching now. But we get uh, (laughs) you are looking to kind of solidify that bench, solidify your roster with guys that can contribute now. You're not really looking for, not to say that you don't want a superstar, but these teams can afford more to just take a role player. They don't necessarily need that upside as much as you would love it. So some of the teams that I had, uh, the Lakers playing off the ball there, uh, the Knicks as well, and then I also had the Hawks. The Hawks pick 20th right now. I actually like that one. I think you could slide in playing the three for him off the bench, uh, play alongside Trey Young, who can be quite the playmaker. So uh, those were some of the teams in that range that I think he would fit in with. Yeah, I had the Lakers down as well. Now, a lot of there is some mocks that have him going in the lottery, uh, and that I think that's the compliment to him based on his, his like shooting ability like his pure shooting ability I think is giving him uh, giving him that kind of uh upside in terms of where he could land. But I also have and for maybe more of a case if they trade back or some or just something about some somebody like Golden State. I mean I I think it's too early for where they I forgot where Golden State picks and the uh Picks in the picks in the lottery, but I don't. I, it might be a little bit too early for him in the lottery. But I just think him in go, him in Golden, him in Golden State, you know, paired with uh, uh like that. I think he's the kind of player, and the Warriors are in that interesting situation where they don't really need a you know like high upside you know, superstar potential pick. They need a I think they're in a situation where they just need a guy like uh Duarte to kinda of just give them more uh offensive firepower, especially off the bench. You know, Golden State doesn't have these days doesn't have the greatest uh bench uh <laughs> scoring option. So I think him him as a him as a Scoring option off the bench for Golden State would be lethal. Yeah, I do. I think that would be a nice fit as well. So let's go to NBA comparisons then. The few names that I had, and the one, he reminded me of a guy from last year's draft who was also an older, more refined player, Desmond Bain, which um, that was the first one that came to mind for me, and I saw a Mm -hmm. few other people say that. Desmond Bain, same thing, not a lot of upside, but we saw for the Grizzlies last year, he was quote-unquote surprising to people because he was a later first-round pick, I believe. I believe he was in the 20s. Um, but he, so he wasn't a guy that people were expecting to come in and light the world on fire, but he proved that from day one, he was a valuable six man. He actually stepped in and started some games, was a very effective Mm -hmm. three point shooter. I think at the end of next season, we could be talking about Duarte in that same regard, a guy that, you know, maybe goes in the late teens, early twenties, maybe even later, maybe because this is a deep draft class. So maybe people like the upside of some of the younger players more. And they decide to, um, you know, go in that direction. So maybe he falls a little bit. But either way, this is a guy that I could see him making the all NBA rookie team. Honestly, I could. I'll say that because I think he's refined and I think he'll produce from day one. Uh, yeah. That and uh, I honestly see him as having six minute a year potential. And he has that kind of just shooting ability. Uh, a couple, I had. Just lethal three points to it. Mike member Mike in terms of uh Mike Miller defender, you know, just a uh, three point shooting option. That's kind of I think he has a little bit more upside to be a better impact player than Mike Miller, but just a guy like him, uh Shade, I'm gonna say Shade because he's never. I don't think he's ever gonna be this good. But Shades of Carmelo in terms of his offensive game, uh, and then Shades, Shades of Clay Thompson, just purely on the offensive end. He is nowhere near the defender that that Clay Thompson is. But to be fair, Clay Thompson also was not the best defender coming out. That's something he really over the first couple of years. So maybe Duarte can develop 
uh, in becoming an average uh, uh, defender. And if he becomes an average defender, I think we're having a different conversation of his skill and then his potential. So, but I, I'm not entirely confident that that'll happen because we just don't see it. But if he does, we're possibly having a different conversation. Yeah, and I mean, that's why I had a, some of the lower names, just more knockdown shooters. Desmond Bain, Dylan Brooks, also from Memphis, mm -hmm. um, Evan Fournier, who has been a lethal shooter throughout the course of his career. Then I also had Tim Hardaway. I saw some flashes of Tim Hardaway's offensive game. So I think those are more, uh, you know. I guess I'd say his floor, because I, no matter what, I think this is a guy whose game is so refined that he's going to make some sort of impact no matter where he goes, and he's going to carve out a role, and I think that's a reality for him. So mm -hmm. uh, I think that's all I have on him then. So uh, that's it for Chris Duarte then. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and wherever you listen to podcasts. To time out with Doc and Caveman, we have more prospect profiles and lots of great NBA content to come. So we'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.